Hi YouTubers, welcome to one of my videos. It's George. And uh, what I've done is serviced the central heating boiler. And I've done it myself and I've done it for I don't know how many years. It's a very, very simple heating system. Um, it's a gravity fed balanced flue gas heater. Um, when it was installed, the boiler was actually overrated for the, the size house. So the boiler was said it was too powerful for the house and the rads were too small. So I've upgraded the radiators by fitting double skin ones over the years. Now to service the boiler on these is very simple because it's a balanced flue and um, it's, it's um, gravity fed so there's four pipes on the back the two go to the immersion tank which is upstairs and the other two go to the radiators the pump from the system is under the floor upstairs now in terms of control you've just got a boiler temperature control which controls the hot water for your taps and that's it to service it, it it means removing covers and things like that but what I do I turn the gas off outside at the gas meter I wait for the pilot light to just go out on its own I then turn the isolation gas valve which is in this cover here in there which is there turn that off and then what I do is I take all the covers off and I start by brushing the fins of the heat converter where the gas flames go and I brush it to get rid of the soot like cleaning a chimney I've got a, a special brush which fits in between all the fins and I brush it from the top down so anything that falls down I catch this removes by the way this metal cover here and then so I clean that out I refit the top with new seals brush out the where the air comes in to the house and where the hot air goes out I then clean the main burner the top of the main burner down and check all the holes are not blocked and I vacuum it all out the next thing I do is I light turn the gas back on I light the pilot lamp pilot flame and I measure the distance how big the flame is it should be one inch and it should actually be touching the thermocouple I don't power the boiler up fully I then blow the pilot lamp out and then after so many seconds the gas should turn off automatically to the pilot light so if the pilot light blows out in the wind which it does from time to time the gas turns off so that's the safety device working for the pilot um, I also can adjust the pilot flame size if it's too short or too long to what it says which is about an inch according to the manual I then check the gas pressure for this size boiler and you adjust it bearing on the kilowatt or the BTU of the boiler um, and the inches in water gauge okay I won't go into that so I'll adjust that if it needs adjusting to make sure it's okay um, what else do I do yeah I think that's about it really uh, yeah yeah and then I put it all back together and it has new seals and it's, the seals there's two sorts of seals on this there's one seal which goes around the hot outlet area so you can get inside the chamber where the heat exchanger is that's like a glass fibre asbestos seal that gets replaced and there's also a seal around this this section or this section which is where the air comes into the boiler it's fairly straightforward and that's about it and that's the servicing of these boilers 
Um, there's not much else to do. It's checking the flame size, the gas safety devices to cut it off, and um, general looking around it for gasket problems or any insects that might go in the air intake. Make sure the air, the hot air outlet is not blocked. So it's just brushing it all down, dusting it out, get rid of any sort, look for leaks, look for tidiness. In terms of electrical systems, really, because there's no pump in here, this is all gas, and uh, the piezo lighter there, this sets the temperature of the boiler. Um, really, that's it. It's time consuming, but it's worth doing. I'll just shut the cover. It's the Stalrad Ideal WLX. Um, option when you get these is whether you have this glass front on or not. If you don't have this glass front on, it slides in and out. It's just plain white. Uh, the pilot, you can see the pilot hopefully glowing through there. In terms of controller, we've got a Centaur Plus C27 Horseman controller, which sets the coming on or off times. Uh, the water tanks are, there's no water tanks, there's no water in our roof space at all. In the airing cupboard is a main immersion heater. So we can, when the boiler's off in the summer, we we'll use the electric to heat the water. And that's on economy seven timer. Uh, the two header tanks, one for the immersion tank and one for the heating system are in the airing cupboard above just above so there's no water in our water space there's no divert valves there's no motorized valves it's not a fully pumped system um, we used to have thermostatic radiator valves but we removed them because we didn't find them very good at all we just balance the radiators now to balance a radiator uh, let's look at this one and what you do is, you measure the temperature coming into the radiator and you measure the temperature going out the radiator when the pump's working. But you have two temperature meters or a differential meter. And what you do, you set it so there's a certain temperature drop across the radiator. And that's how you balance them. So you get equal heat round one. But in a system, you should always have one radiator basically open full. And we decided to have the one in the bathroom, which is a towel rail, as so well as a radiator. So that one's open full. So the bathroom is always the hottest room in the house. We don't have any radiators like this on the outside of the wall of the house. All our radiators are on internal walls so that you don't get a heat loss through the brickwork. Because if you put a radiator on an outside wall to the garden, for example, the heat will go through the brickwork and outside. Having all the radiators on the inside of the wall means any heat that's lost through the brickwork is gone into the next room. We don't heat the kitchen in any way apart from this is where the boiler is and the boiler heat generates enough heat in the kitchen to keep it warm. We don't heat the downstairs toilet, we don't heat the utility room. We do have an electric floor heater there we can put on, um, and I use it mainly blowing air around the kitchen if I do any varnishing of any wood in here, and also to give a little bit of heat around your feet because it can be cold around your feet. Now the boiler's just kicked in, hope you can hear it. It creaks and grinds a bit. Uh, we can see the flame down there. Should be a really really nice 
blue flame. So thanks for watching this video. There's not much else to say. Um, it's been a very wet couple of days. I've not been able to get down the van. And uh, my thoughts of the van. Well, the work I'm doing on the van, if we get rid of the van, it, the people who get by the van from us will get a better van than we first bought it because we've done a fair bit of work on it. Engine mounts, belt changes, timing belt changes, new brake pads at the front. So if we do decide to sell it, they will get a good van. You know, much better condition than when we bought it. If we decide to keep it, then all the better. But um, at the moment, we haven't made up our minds. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like. And share. Take care.